This podcast is brought to you by the following sponsors. Your San Diego County Toyota dealers. We've got what it takes. Fix Auto. Corky's Pest Control. And Lolita's Family of Restaurants. Hey there, sports fans. Full-time hoops, Mr. Seaped. Welcome to the, the we're going to recap the local finals and we're going to talk state finals. Mm-hmm. Aaron, one word to summarize last weekend. Nostradamus. Now I'm assuming that's because of your prediction abilities being tested to their max? Yeah, I, I'm not really good at predicting things, so I'm going to stop now. Just like Nostradamus had to do back way back when. And I am going to tag team off of that and admit. Can you hold this for me for a second? Of course. San Diego, I was wrong. That's right. So was I. I went to Saints, apparently. I dominated that 3v3 alumni tournament. <laughs> Tayshawn doesn't want to admit it, but I, I, I tried to go to the hoop to him. I embarrassed myself, but I tried. I've got a shirt right over there, too. But um, it, Why is it on fire, Aaron? Yeah. It, you threw it in the, the trash can and lit it. I'm just kidding. I, I pretty much did. Okay, so my- Saints, I'm sorry. We will get to that a little bit later in yes. the show. Um, I want to just say history. Man, we saw a couple first-time champions. Yes. We saw, honestly, this was the closest weekend of basketball finals that I can remember in recent in You know what else also memory. happened? Yes. This was, according to Sports on the Side, Kevin Bear told me this. This was the first um, um, championship weekend in recent history where there wasn't a single dunk. Yeah. Yeah, there wasn't. Wow. Defensive battles. Yes. If you want to call 20% shooting defensive battles, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll, call that, I'll call that defenders Different preventing stuff. good shots. Yes. Let's say that. Okay. Um, let's also say our last final regular season top tens. We'll get to yours first, and then we will get to Tommy's and tell you where Tommy is. Yeah. Um, well, of course, we've just talked about it. St. Augustine, the number one team in San Diego. Saint- Come marching in. Yeah. When the Saints come. You can mm-hmm. keep saying it. <laughs> so number two, of course, is Tory Pines. Oh, so close to making me look very prophetic. But it in the could be one A, one B. That's how close that championship is. Yeah, but, but if, someone has to be. And you already know what my old coach used to tell me about clothes. Horseshoes and hand grenades. Okay. Yep. Um, number three, vi- uh, number three is Foothills Christian. Number four, Vista. Number five, the D two champions making a big leap. Um, uh, Helix, of course, the Highlanders getting it done in a very taut oh, game. Man, that oh, that was, that was four. Man, I I almost literally had a heart attack on on watching that game. I I had. Some serious heart palpitations it's going. Crazy. It was crazy. Have a kid or a, in the game or a horse in the race, really, and you're still like, this game is just driving me crazy. Yes, it was insane. Um, six modern day Catholics, seven Mission Hills, number eight, uh, the Division One champions, Santa Fe Christian, making a jump back into the top ten after so a so. defensive struggle against Lincoln. Number nine, La Jolla Country Day, and I'm going to give my number 10 to Lincoln. The Hornets making their way all the way to the D1 championship and a couple of free throws and maybe a couple of shots away from pulling off the 6-1 upset. And that's my top 10 um, to end the season, regular season. Let's now go to check in with Tommy Morris and hear his top 10. Tommy is out <laughs> at Brawley today making his amends. Tommy, take it away. Thank you, Christian Aaron. As you know, I'm here at Brawley High School. Because we all picked against them, and they won. They proved us wrong. I'll give you my final top ten for this year, and then I will go ahead and take the punishment of the pie in the face. Starting with our number ten team, I got Orange Glenn after their almost win in the Division Two championship game, missing two of their best players down the stretch. Pretty impressive job there by Orange Glenn. Number nine, Modern Day. Eight, La Jolla Country Day. Seven, Santa Fe Christian after their Division One uh, championships. Congratulations to those guys. Mission Hills at number six. Helix, number five, Division Two champions. Congratulations, Highlanders. Number four, Vista. Three, Torrey Pines after the near, almost being open division champions. Two, Foothills Christian now moved them up after their impressive performance against Saints. And number one, obviously, is Saints. And we got our first pie, one of five. Who, who, who's coming up first? My hey, what's, what's your name? What's your name? Jose Cristina. What position do you play? I'm a guard. And do you have anything to say to me, Aaron, and Christian? You should have looked up the stats better. 
Ah, senhor. Wait, you, I believe you said uh, that's why you shouldn't yeah. write. Mo moral of the story is don't write checks that your mouth can't cash. And Tommy is learning that lesson over at Brawley. At least they look low calorie pies. No, they didn't. No, it looked like it was just mostly whipped cream. Tommy will be fine. He'll work out. He'll work that off at the gym. <laughs> Dudes get pied every day, B. You'll be all right. You'll be all right, Tommy. You'll be all right. Um, okay, so game balls, Aaron. Uh, let, let's talk about. All right. Just give me a player or two from each game. All right, so, of course, open division. I want to give a, a, a game ball to Hayden Helfrich of Torrey Pines. Absolutely. You know, they were down 28, what was it, 25-18 at halftime. He comes out, bang, 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 three triples, changes the complexion of the game. When he hit a 3-2 to get them to that 25-18. Yeah, that was, that was awesome. I mean, and you know, the, the play of the game for me, for him, was that streaking layup that he hit that caused me to scream on the Sports on the Side video. And, of course, you know, as he runs away, he points, to the um, TP chaos, that that was that was awesome. Uh, Division one, I've got to give a, a game ball to Matthew Stevenson, a Santa Fe okay. Christian. Talk to Chad Bickley after the game, and we were both in agreement that while Derek Moore was hitting shots, the only guy to hit shots in that game on both sides, it was Matthew Stevenson who set the table. He was able to bring the ball up court, initiate the offense. You know, as you know, Owen Asheris was blanketed by Mike Singletary, so Matt had to play a point forward role. And he, he, you know, he was the, in my opinion, he was the game changer for Santa Fe Christian. In the Division Two game, I got to give a shout out to Helix's Dylan Lee. You know, he came out in that Absolutely. second half. He made some huge yeah, shots. Yeah, huge shots. I mean, he was saddled with foul trouble, had two fouls, had to sit out most of the first half. You know, comes in third quarter, you know, one three, then another three, and then another three in rapid um, progression that really, you know, almost had that game turn into a blowout. I mean, they were up 14. You know, Dylan hit the la that, that third in the series, and, you know, he and we thought they were cruising away with it. Of course, you got to give credit to Orange Glenn fighting through the adversity of not only, you know, not being having two of their best players in the lineup, but then losing Michael Diaz with five minutes left. They could have folded up 10. They Absolutely. didn't, and they kept going. They, that, that was a, a, a real true yeah. fight to the last Nick game. Nikola Kresovich would have been the hero of the game with, you know, had he hit that three over Miles Norris. Well, he boiling it down to something like that because he had a hell, hell of a game, game leading up to Really that. did, really did. I mean, and he gets a, you know, he'll get a co-game ball for that one, too. Absolutely. Uh, Division three. Xavier Allison had a really good game, but um, want to give a shout out to Bryce Boucher of Sage Creek. I mean, this is a guy that we haven't talked about all season, and you know, I don't have a ton of intel on him, but he had a game high 16 points yeah. for for Sage Creek. And you know, Brandon Dowdy talked about it after the game. They're not a great three point shooting team, but when they execute their offense, they get a lot of easy looks on the interior. And you got to credit guys for making those shots. So Bryce Boucher gets that one. You also give got to give credit to Brandon for getting a technical there with 20 seconds left. <laughs> Come on, man. What you pulling, man? What you trying to get, man? You trying to you trying to get an and one up twenty? Come on! Yeah, that, that's that's <laughs> going for the dunk on your grandma level of. Uh... <laughs> Of, of basketball. Yeah, that's that's we trying to fifty piece over here. I feel you. That's some uh, <laughs> uh, D four, uh, a, a kind of a somber um, game ball. I got to give to Beto Lopez, uh, the senior playing in you know his final um, San Diego CIF game. Um, had you know went down with a really bad looking non contact injury. Um, I'm not sure what the prognosis is, but it didn't look good there. But you know, he left it all on the floor. Um, you know, he was on triple double watch as Absolutely. well. Really great game up to that point. So, Beto, get better. Um, we look forward to seeing you. You know, at the next level. I, I, I do believe this is a kid who can play college basketball. Oh, he showed his versatility in a big time game. Big time, big time. And in Division Five, I got to give a co um, game ball. We've talked a lot about Josh Clark um, at, at Health Sciences, but I don't want to. You know, we've talked enough. But I want to give a shout out to his teammate, Musa Adam, the six foot three senior forward, hit five threes in a, in that thrilling overtime game. At Second year in a row that the D five game has gone to overtime. Third. Third year in a row. Third year. In a row. Wow. Yeah, couple. folks, that just proves why you need to go watch these games. Exactly. And then on the Guahomi Park Academy side, um, I, I got to give a I got to give a lot of credit to Tiberius Ballard and Christian Garrett. Uh, the, the, the duo really did, you know, really had an excellent game. Tiberius Ballard had a stretch in the second half where he scored 12 straight points that, you know, gave them the lead back. And, you know, in a really, 
I mean, that was one of the more intense games I've ever seen um, at, at the high school level. I mean, you have two teams that, you know, don't have a really huge profile, but they're competing and, and they're fighting and they're clawing and their crowds are into it. And the surgeon's, you know, mascot is a heart with an echocardiogram <laughs> on it. It's, you know, it's, it's just, it's high school basketball at its very essence. So want to give a shout out to all those guys. A lot of more, a lot of more peaks in that echocardiogram yeah. during that game. Um, <laughs> I'm going to sprint down my game balls really quickly. Sorry, uh, no, it's okay. Uh, Tayshawn gets one for the Ooh, open division yeah. because of doing it on both ends. Yes. Blocks and threes. Yes. Also, got to give just a, a, a total game ball to that both sides of that open division and both fan sections. That was an awesome game. That was a that was probably the best environment that has ever happened in the Jenny Craig Pavilion. Yeah. It, 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 if not on a very short ice, list. No, that USD fans... They're, they're nowhere near that. Um, the D1 game, I want to give a game ball to Charles Dudley. He had a couple of huge assists, yeah. and, and that's a misunderstood part of the game. You know, you don't really – you got to be – someone has to be that person giving up the ball. You made that um, to Derek Morty. Ex exactly. Uh, at the D2 level, you already mentioned Dylan Lee. He really took the team on his back down that second half. Um, you know, you got to give – Maybe a co-game ball to the 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 law firm of uh, Henson, Arnold, and Norris, yeah. um, just because of, of sticking with it. Yeah. Uh, Orange Glenn was throwing haymaker after haymaker after haymaker, and the Helix they they held strong at the end. They yes. they held strong at the end. Uh, the, not, I would not have appeared on this show, by the way, if Orange Glenn had pulled that off. I would have crawled into a hole and been too embarrassed to show my face. Hmm. Just saying. That's okay. We would have missed you. It, it, the show wouldn't have been the same. Um, I want to give a game ball to Dylan Rossi at Sage Creek yes, for yes. some huge blocks. Big time. Ooh, um, ooh he had one. Oh, it was. <laughs> yeah. We, 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 yeah. Oof. Um, trying to think. Oh, man, I, I, I just, a, just a general. You, you mentioned Beto. The general game ball to, to Brawley for proving us wrong. Yes. Um, and speaking of what. Oh, one more game ball. Kayla Rooks. Oh, man. Four championships. Oh, man. Oh, man. Her hand is now filled with rings. She's got one little thumb, one left for the state title this year. That, um, that one was for Pops. Yeah. No, that, that was an emotional day where she she matched up, and she had a great game. Where That included assists, rebounds, points. I mean, really, truly a team player and, and someone that, I mean, we're, we're going to be all humbled when we watch her go on to the next and the next level and keep doing it and keep doing it. And it's like, well, she did it the right way here and did it the right way at the next level. So, Kayla, congratulations and a huge quadruple game ball out to you. And the Mission Hills Grizzlies. And the Mission Hills Grizzlies. Um, given the Patriots a run for the dynasty money. Um, Quad bro. That brings us to Tommy Morris' game balls. Tommy <laughs> Morris is uh, hopefully cleaned up a little bit more. Uh, let's so. go see. Tommy, how you doing? All right, so here are my shout-outs for the, the playoff games in the, in the Open Division. Excuse me, Otto Taylor. Wow. I mean, he had an amazing performance in the semifinals, followed it up with a great uh, game in the finals as well. Good job, Otto. Division one, Derek Moore, a game that had almost no scoring, 39-35 game. He had 13 points for Santa Fe Christian. Good job for him. Division two, Orange Glenn. Again, can't say enough about the way those guys played. With Diaz fouling out, without Trevor. Great performance by them. Unfortunately, they came up short. Division three, Xavier Allison. He had 13 points, but more importantly, Floor general out there really took control of that game. Uh, was there a Division 4 game? I can't remember. Was there a Division 4? Uh, uh, was, there, was there a Division 4? There's a Division 4 game. <laughs> I'm going to skip that one for now. Uh, Health Science is great job in Division 5. And Division 4, obviously, huge shout out to all of Brawley. Great job to those guys. Yeah. Here's all we got our second block coming in. Who's coming in now? Name? Isaiah Bismarck. Position? The center. And any words for advice for me and the rest of the San Diego Prep and Center crew? Uh, don't doubt us. Here comes number two. <laughs> Guys, back to you. So Tommy is now two pies deep. Mm -hmm. It seems like he made might have made a little bit of a, a mistake, as you said. Um, and I'm going to check here to see if I muted that. We're going to restart over because I just muted the mic. Uh, so, Aaron, Tommy keeps getting uh, dirtier and dirtier. I'm glad that we stayed here. Th this is about the level of punishment I ever want to go through. Yeah. Um, other than the Tayshawn you know, tattoo I'm probably going to have to get for the, them winning the state title. You don't think the drive was punishment enough for Tommy? It's a scenic drive. Scenic. They got some wind farms. And rocks. Hey, geologists would love that. And there's a prison. Randy Marsh would love that. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, so let's talk about some games. 
All we got some state games coming up. Yeah. Run us through real quick. We're not going to go in-depth, in-depth, because yeah, yeah. we, we want to just focus on the San Diego teams. But just run us through the first couple sets of games, some of the open division teams that are playing. Okay. Of course, you've got uh, – you've got – Start with Saints. Okay, yeah, you got Saints. They've got a nice little matchup against the number three team in the bracket, which would be uh, which would be Sierra Canyon. It's a big um, game. That's a big game, and it's going to be an interesting game just because Sierra Canyon's on some uneven footing right now. They essentially fired their coach. He's still there, but he was demoted um, for state playoff. Lame games. duck type. Yeah, of. kind of a lame duck situation there. I think that. Saints could make this a close game, but I think ultimately the talent level that Sierra Canyon brings with multiple Division One prospects, including the number one player in the country, regardless of class, Marvin Bagley, you know, I, I think that Sierra Canyon pulls it up, but I think Saints gives them a game. I'll say this about Saints. Uh, what what kind of drove me to, to pick against them was that they always seem to have something that screams to be exposed yeah. and exploited. But I got to give them credit all season long. Every time something has popped up, they've closed ranks, made the adjustment yeah, and moved on. So at this point, you know, I'm obviously all in with all the San Diego teams, but I'm legitimately considering that Saints, you've proved me wrong in the greatest of fashions. You know, every time it's tried to be like, oh, this guy is out. They recover. Oh, this guy isn't. You know, uh, this guy isn't shooting well. They recover. This guy isn't playing good defense today. They recover. So I, I like Saints. Let's move now. Tory Pines. Okay. Tory Pines faces the number one team in, overall in the brackets. Uh, that that would be Bishop Montgomery out of Torrance. Uh, Bishop Montgomery is not a very big team, but they have about four guys who are about six three to six five, including Ethan Thompson, who's one of the better um, players in California. I like Bishop Montgomery in this one. I think Jake Gilliam and Ethan Esposito give them a puncher's chance early. They're going to keep it relatively close, but ultimately just the speed and the overall defense from Bishop Montgomery wins out. Okay, let's move on to Foothills. Um, Foothills facing Oak Park. Now, I'm actually, I think I'm going to pick Foothills in this one. And the reason why is because I think they have the advantage when it comes to getting up and down a transition. Uh, Oak Park. Very big front line, uh, six foot ten. Riley Batten, one of the top twenty eighteen prospects. Zeke Richards, kind of a, a new, uh, you know, kind of a, a dark horse, a late bloomer, if you want to say, in that twenty eighteen class, who's six uh, eleven. Know, we've talked about the Slatchard brothers, Wes and Clark Slatchard. You know, they're really good players as well. I think that when you have that singular talent of Jalen Hands and you've got an up-tempo you know, offense that gets the ball just up and down the court, I think they're going to be able to tire the big guys out and make it a pretty, you know, pretty interesting game. I'm picking the Knights. Let's go with Vista. Uh, Vista. They've got a – first of all, CIF State, what are you guys doing? Vista is the 11th seed. Taft is a 3 seed. Taft beat Vista head-to-head. -head. That makes no sense. So if Vista does manage to get out of the first round, you're telling me that Taft gets to host Vista and not vice versa? Come on. Get your heads out of you nowhere. Now to this game. <laughs> I think, I think Vi I'm going to pick Vista in an upset. And the reason why is, again, contrast Is that styles. because you like Taurus Samuels? Uh, I think it's because I like the speed uh, that Vista plays with. And as we've seen, whether it be tapped with uh, Antoine January, you know, uh, Torrey Pines with Jake Gilliam and Ethan Esposito, they're not worried about, like, playing against teams with size. And Santa Margarita, ladies and gentlemen, has a ton of size. They have three guys um, in their front court that are over 6'7". I mean, but you can't teach speed. Yeah, but you can't teach speed. I think Vista goes in, wins a close one. I like it. And an upset. I love it. Let's uh, head back out to Tommy Morris. Tommy, break down some games and uh, let us know how those pies are tasting. All right, so some previews are my predictions, I guess, for the playoffs. Open division, Saints got Sierra Canyon. It's going to be a tough game. That Sierra Canyon is Terrence McBride, Adam Seiko, both those guys going to San Diego State next year. Remy Martin heading to Arizona State, and Cody Riley is headed to UCLA. Also, they have Marvin Bagley Jr., who's one of the top juniors, not only in California, but in the whole entire nation. So I don't think that Saints are going to be able to pull this one off. As much as I love Saints, I've had them number one all year. I think that Sierra Canyon gets this one. Number eight, Torrey Pines traveling to number one, Bishop Montgomery. Again, it's going to be a tough task for them. They've got... Jordan Shaken go to SCSU. Ethan Thompson go to Oregon State. I unfortunately have to pick against both these San Diego teams in this one. I'll take Bishop Montgomery in Division One. Vista going to Santa Margarita. I think they have a chance in this one. I think Tori Samuels and Vista pull off the win. And then Foothills Christian, the seventh seed, taking on the number ten seed Oak Park. They have Riley Baden, the junior center, with a bunch of D1 offers. Wes Saljak, it's, uh, can't say your name, Wes. I'm sorry. You and your brother uh, Clark, both great players, but I can't pronounce your last name. Too confusing, man. Less less consonants, more vowels. Um, both going to be Division One guys, but 
I think Foothills Christian pulls out the win. That after that, got to get another pie in the face. So who's my next yeah, yeah, name? Casey Klein. Position. Power forward. And what do you want to say to us? Uh, you should have picked us. <laughs> It just keeps coming. Yes. Good, good for Tom. Tommy's a real trooper for taking it out there today. Pies on pies on pies on pies. He might want to run for mayor of Brawley after this. They seem to love him. They man. really do like um, him. They like him. And as with all politicians, he has a little pie on his face. <laughs> that concludes our political segment today. Yeah. Now let's get back to the games. Mm -hmm. We've got modern day. Yeah. With the, uh, the the big triad, if you will, the the, the big three that emerged this year, mm -hmm. break it down for me. All right, so modern day faces Harvard Westlake. Harvard Westlake, of course, you know, lots of stars come out of that uh, out of that school. Of course, you've got Cassius Stanley, one of the top sophomores in the country, and Johnny Juzang, one of the best freshmen in the country. Um, going up against the freshman that I just named freshman of the year, um, Beyond Riley, and of course, an up and coming wing, Trey Anderson, in the class of 2018. I like Modern Day in this one, not by much. But I think the home court advantage will give them the edge that they need to overcome it. But you know, in order to do it, they've just got to contain the um, they got to contain Cassius off the wing, and they've got to do a good job against Mason Hooks on on the inside, a six foot eight freshman who's really talented. Moving on, Mission Hills. Mission Hills, um, they're the 12 seed, interestingly enough, and they're going to face the CIF Division I champion Rancho Verde. Rancho Verde um, boasts one of the top front court players, but he hasn't played since December. That's UC Riverside bound a Johnny Kennedy. But they have, but what they do have, and it's been their calling card for years, it's been their defense. But I'm going to go with the 512 upset. I'm going to pick Mission Hills in this one. Why? I think that Warren Washington and Ed Finzi are going to be a lot for um, for them to overcome, for uh, Rancho Verde to overcome. Even though it's a home game, I think that Mission Hills has the experience necessary to whittle away at that defense and eke out a close one. It's a deep Mission Hills team. Santa Fe Christian. Santa Fe Christian gets a home game um, in the Division Three playoffs or Division Division Three playoffs against uh, Vista Murrieta out of the Murrieta area. They actually beat Mission Hills without Warren Washington and um, Ed Finzi earlier in the season. It was a close one. I think it was 74 to 70. So with that said, I think I'm going to pick Santa Fe Christian in this one to get that home win. Uh, Vista Murrieta, an unheralded team with a ton of really good guards, whether it be Mike Krongkong, um it you know the the Newble brothers are. All also really talented, and they've got some talented front court players, which means it's almost a mirror match. And I'm going to pick Santa Fe with the home crowd or not. Orange Glen. Orange Glen. Uh, this is a game. They're playing Capistrano um, Valley. This is a game that kind of reminds me of a 215 matchup last year, where Kearney got the upset against Edison of Huntington Beach. I don't think that Orange Glen is a 14 seed. They should be seated much higher. I don't think that Capistrano Valley is a three seed. They should be seated much lower. So this may be an upset on paper, but I think Orange Glen wins this one, and they win it. Um, and and they they win it pretty handily. And yeah, so I'm picking Orange Glen. All right, so we got an upset alert. Tommy, how do you see it? Division two now, modern day facing Harvard Westlake. The eight and nine game, gonna be tough. Cassius Stanley, one of the top sophomores in the country. Stick with modern day though. Beyond Riley and those guys. Take care of business. Number five, Mission Hills versus, or excuse me, number 12, Mission Hills versus number five, Rancho Verde. Big man, Anaji Kennedy, great player, but he's not as good as Warren Washington. I'm going to take both San Diego games in Division Two. Division Three, Santa Fe Christian hosting Vista Marietta. Give me the Eagles. They played great in that Division One game. I'm going to stick with them. Orange Glen playing Capistrano Valley. I think it's going to be close, but like I said, Orange Glen really impressed me. I'm going to take the big upset here 14 over the three seed. And with that, I got pie number four coming. So what's your name? Uh, Moses Lassos. Position? Uh, guard. And any words for Aaron, Christian, and myself? Um, I just wanted to say who's your daddy, really. Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> All right, Moses, do it. Hey, I like that one because it was strategic. Very smart, Moses. Appreciate that. Guys, back to you. Strong words there, Aaron. Yo. Strong words from Moises. <laughs> and there goes his cream of the county invitation. It's somewhere in the garbage um, compactor. Actually, no. Um, my father, Mike Randolph, great guy, not Moises Lassos. 
Your dad has a heck of a handshake. Yes. I was like, I was looking like this afterwards when I went after it. it he had, like he just had a, he had a, he had a mean smile on his face. No, it was more like, uh, I feel like there's an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie where he goes in for the big high five. Oh, yeah, one of those type of. Arm, yeah. yeah. Uh, my dad's name is Scott. Um, he looks eerily similar to me, just a goofier, whiter version of me, which uh, we didn't know was possible. Neither of um, his name is Moises. Yeah, so let's uh, let's move on to the rest of the games, Aaron. Yay. Helix. Helix. They're taking on Granada Hills out of the Los Angeles Valley area. I'm picking Helix in the win. They're set up um, to be probably the only San Diego team to make it to a championship in the state, um, state rounds. Is this the best Helix team of all time? It's up there, definitely. It's probably top three. Miles Norris versus Bill Walton in their high school days. Because I know that you were back there scouting them. Walton. Close, though. No? No. Okay. No. I'm wrong. I'm overhyping it, maybe. But this team together, though, might be one of the best Helix teams, if not the best Helix team of all time. Yeah. Um, let's keep it moving. We got Sage Creek. Sage Creek has to actually has to travel to 29 Palms. Who uh, they have a really good team out in 29 Palms. Uh, runners up in the league over there with Rancho Mirage. Um, this is one of those matchups where I would pick, pick Sage Creek if it was a home game, but traveling to 29 Palms is not easy. That takes a lot out of you, and I think that the host is going to have the slight advantage just because of that long road trip. So I'm going to pick 29 Palms. Brawley. Um, Brawley, the number four seed, they're in, in Division Five playing New Design Watts. I'm going to pick Brawley to win this one. I'd feel a lot more confident if Beto Lopez um, was clear to play, but um, without him, I still feel that they're going to have enough to get it done. You want to make a bet about it? Not so much. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's a, ha ha. All right, keep us rolling down that list. All right, we got uh, number. Uh, 12 Olympian going to Desert Christian in Palm Springs. I'm gonna pick. Uh, I'm gonna pick Desert Christian in this one. I think again, just travel. Um, Olympian, you know they've they've had a heck of a run. You know came up short in that Division Four finals. I think they come up just short in this game um, out in the desert. Health Science is going to Rolling Hills Prep. They're facing one of the best coaches in um, California history, Harvey Katani, who was at Fairfax um, for. As long as I can remember, when I was living in Los Angeles and I played out there, he was the coach at Fairfax. But now he's at Rolling Hills. He's got a nice uh, squad there. I think that they get this one. And then Guahomi playing number one, Notre Dame. Uh, that's going to be a tough matchup for Guahomi Park. I think that you know they've had an excellent season. Again, kudos to making it to the Division Five championship game. I think they make this one close. But I think ultimately in the end, I think Notre Dame ekes out that um, home win. And that will do it, folks. That is all of the state playoff games. Let's hear what Tommy Morris's last uh, pie. last uh, group of picks pie. Pie sounds like. And I think he's got one more pie inbound. Pie. Tommy, finish it out. All right, final two divisions now. Division four, number two Helix going to face Granada Hills Charter. I think they will have no problem hosting that game. They'll win that one. Sage Creek, 29 Palms. It's going to be a tough game. I will Again, I'm really biased for San Diego, as these probably people already know. <laughs> I'm going to take Sage Creek over 29 Palms. And in Division 5, we've got a few teams in there. The home way part facing Notre Dame. The 16 seed versus the 1. They probably will have trouble with that. I'll take Notre Dame. Then we got Olympian <laughs> versus Desert Christian Academy. I will take Olympian, though. I think the 12 seed has the upset. Number 15, Health Sciences facing Rolling Hills Prep. I will take Rolling Hills Prep. And the final game I'm going to pick is number four, Brawley, taking on New Design Watts. Guys, who are these numbers going to Last part, I want to wait. Come in here before I, before I give a prediction. MVP! We're going to win. MVP! And your name? Beto Lopez. And you want to say we're going to win, I'm assuming? Uh, we're the best, that's all I know. I will pick Brawley in this one. Um, who's gonna make the trip? Shout out to the lunch lady, Pie Says Great. Back to you. So, Tommy is gonna spend the next week smelling like pie and trying to clean up. Thank you very much to Brawley for being good sports yeah, in all of that. Awesome, guys. Uh, good to see you guys watching and interacting with us. And good sports for not hitting him with the 16 pies that you allegedly bought after he made that bet. Yeah, I was told Key Lime was gonna be involved, yeah. and that's how you get ants. Yes. Um, 
it's 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 kind of sad being at this point, but it's kind of exciting being at this point because because we're, we're closing in on the end of the season. But we're closing in on big games. So if you guys get a chance to travel with your teams, I don't know if schools are doing spirit buses or not, but these are these are important games to go to if if you're a fan because you get to see big moments. Yeah, the, can, se- the season doesn't end at Jenny Craig Pavilion for all these teams. They need your support. Absolutely, you know, get out there, cheer them on. Even if you have to go all the way to Twenty Nine Palms, are you going to make that drive? Don't think so. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, you can follow us on Twitter for all updates of scores, results, at Full Time Hoops. You can follow us at SD Prep Insider. Last thing I want to say, um, you know, we're starting to transition out. I know that you guys will be, um, you know, baseball, lacrosse. That's going to be the big thing. As for me, basketball continues this weekend. Almost all of the major AAU teams have their tryouts. San Diego All-Stars, Game Point, Coastal Elite, the California Bearcats. Um, they all have tryouts this weekend. So if you're a player that wants you know, some exposure and also wants to play against top competition, um, check out all those teams' websites and you know just get ready for the the spring and summer AAU season. Absolutely, we we're not done yet entirely. We'll be back next week with yes. a with one more we'll recap one more to let recap. everyone know, and then we'll check in with you in the off season, see what's up, see if you're working on your tan. And this time, I will take video this summer, and you know we'll maybe have some segments or something. That's what I like to hear, uh, folks. Go check out these games, and we will see you next week. Out.